Don't be don't fucking do rude. Are you kidding me? I swear Stop. to God, Stop. don't be fucking what rude. Are you hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your boy Jamsis, and you know, preseason's like ending tomorrow, but we keep it pushing and we're gonna try hard a few games since the last few games i was like dicking around trying stuff so i'm just trying to get into shape to try and you know continue i don't know like it doesn't matter <laughs> like, <laughs> but, like we're trying hard in rta just just to prove to myself that like you know i can it was fun to like fuck around and try new units like amid and like oh, Amid's shit. other DPSs like Kisei and Ludwig and other stuff, but we are back to try and just, you know, stay in shape. Because I think that's one of the things that hold a lot of people back in RTA is that like they don't know how their like teams and gear fit into the meta. So like it, it pays off to just like do some like maintenance mode or ranked. So fresh off the bat, fresh off the bat, like, I think I meant to say fresh out of the gate and first off the bat. Anyway, <laughs> my opponent in the first match picks like this Carmen made stuff, so I'm like already disgusted. So I pick C. Lilius first because like, you know, what else am I going to do? And I pick um, Stenny here and I actually opted to pick Amid because... She's a very aggressive Soul Weaver, and I wasn't really gonna debuff anything with, like, you know, like, Bryceria or, like, Flitica, especially since my Flitica's on, like, mid lane effectiveness. So I decided to just go ahead and pick Amid, just because she's the most offensive Soul Weaver, and my opponent, like, already pretty much conceded turn two. Uh, I go for the Strays, Strays pick here, which is, like, quite rare for me, because... Strays needs two other DPSs, which is hard to pick sometimes. And then I think I'm going for Aiden last, just because Aiden's like, you know, a bullshit unit. And my opponent, like, like TBH, like Aiden's not the best here because Aiden doesn't do well into Karina, Senya, or Bryceria, but it's fine. Like, we should be fine. We actually go for the ban onto Maid, which I thought was a little weird in hindsight, like, especially since Bryce area, like, cucks her. But I didn't want the cleanse and the attack buff to go up. So we firstly are able to, like, open up with our Conqueror Lilius because she outspeeds everything by, like, 50%, like, whatever. And even though my opponent banned Aimid here, my units are tuned very, very well to the point where like they don't need a CR push to cut like made Carmen teams. Like my strays is 240. I'm hoping that the strays like blows up Carmen and procs Rysari immortality here so I can do more fun stuff with um Aiden and Steny Soulburn into like Karina maybe. And we luckily are able to well, it's not really lucky with Portrait and like 100% death pen. But anyway, we are able to delete <laughs> the Carmen from existence, so. Karina is able to go, but she doesn't do as much damage as expected because, I don't know, like I guess Vigor is like fair and balanced or whatever. And I'm kind of at a point where I need to map out what to do well. So I decide to S1 into Bryceria just because Bryceria is redirected provoked. So I don't need to really worry about her. And I can kill her from the follow up with Strays S2. And then I go for the Steny stun just to fish if I can F check it. But it does turn out to be some sort of ER build, which is not like the best for me, but we'll have to see. Senya goes for the S3 and Aiden counters and Aiden being a fair and balanced unit somehow manages to put in work in a game where she has three counters. So that's really fun. We are able to kill Senya through the dual attack with Steny and yeah, it's pretty good. Um, I think even if I didn't kill Senya, like Strays had a chance to kill it and then like, you know, I could have kept running in my DPSs, especially since Steny wouldn't be provoked locked by Senya because she's uncounterable. But yeah, that's the first match. And as always, if you like my content, or even if you don't, consider like leaving a like, subscribe, comment, join my Discord, and like whatever. But 
while we are in the waiting room for the next match, um, I do want to talk about like a few gripes I have about this meta, uh, in the fact that while technically it is the most diverse meta we've seen in a while, because a lot of playstyles are viable, I still think it's not that enjoyable because you still see like the same 10 units. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, you can see Steny in like standard, you can see Steny in aggro, you can see Steny in tank down or slower teens with like lifesteal, depending on like you know, like the comp, like if it's like a single target cleave game, like you could actually pick steady into cleave. Or you can see Aiden and aggro, you can see Aiden and standard, you can it see Aiden so and anti-cleave. In cleave, it's just like one of those things, you know? But I find that very, 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 very not great about this meta because I'm really tired of seeing like the same units. And as much as I like using C. Lilius, I'm also really tired of seeing her face every time I don't have first pick. So that's kind of disheartening. <coughs> anyway, my opponent, like as I was saying, rudely takes my C. Lilius from me. So I'm trying out like a new thing. Like normally I used to do like SCROL plus DJB, but I've actually transitioned into Flitica DJB because I can threaten my opponent with like Flitica into more standard matchups, but DJB has a lot of value into like more aggressive matchups where the cleanse actually matters. My opponent like follows up with Politis, which is good into DJB and like technically good into Flitica depending, and Sid as a speed imprint. So I follow up by picking Aiden and Yolha, and my opponent picks Sohawk to counter my Aiden and Rant to finish out the draft. So one thing I noticed about my opponent's draft is that my opponent's draft really wants to let Aiden go through and they also do not have a bridge for their top units depending on how fast this Sahak is. So I go for a gamble and ban the Conqueror Lilius and my opponent bans <laughs> mitigation like an ape so we like we love that. So we just kind of have to pray that Aiden doesn't die here, but I'm pretty confident nothing other than my Aiden will die. Granted, they don't get like RNL or whatever. But it looks like RNL does not proc. Kron does get his immortality stripped off, which is kind of tragic, but you know, Flitica is actually faster than the Sahak. So she's able to push up. And we are pretty much securing the victory here because even though Kron's fucking useless, um, I don't think Politis and Ran will be able to stole this Aiden. And yeah, well, we tried. are able to cinch the win you know, she... for the second win in a row. Like, <sighs> feels nice to be back at it. But as I said, like, I don't know. Um, I really like if you guys have seen the season infographic for the most recent competitive RTA season where it had the stats and like you could see like Lua was banned like 70% of the time and she was first picked she wasn't first picked a lot but like that goes back to the fact that a lot of people ungear their Lua because like why would you gear something that's pre-banned literally all the time but I really wish they would consider nerfing things like even if it's like Conqueror Lilius or Lua and like Guiding Light and Book, just because these over centralizing options really choke out everything else. And it leads to situations where, like in the current meta, if you haven't noticed, um, picking a DPS on three is one of the hardest things to do, unless it's like one of those very uber safe DPSs, like Steny or savior Aiden just because everything's so fast and everything's so aggressive that unprotected DPSs just can't function anymore and a lot of like the old popular DPSs like Landy or any like RGV unit really get like really hard countered by counter picks in the 4-5 position so that's not great but yeah in, in this match my opponent first picks APOC here which is like very interesting. <laughs> I haven't seen that in forever. So I respond with um, Conqueror Lilius and Savior Aiden, and then my opponent 
responds by picking like uh, anti debuffer in DJB and Stenny because Stenny like you know is safe from Aiden, quote unquote, which was pretty nice. And then I respond by picking Amid again, and this is where I'm really liking Amid because since my opponent like pretty much committed a lot of his draft to units that I know are slower than Amid because like DJBs do not break like 280 anymore. Like come on, I can really punish them with strays or. Aiden, because a Amid, not Amid, Amid should be able to buff one of my DPSs and they will one shot this APOC, like guaranteed. They pick AOL here, which is really annoying since I don't really have a great way to deal with it, but I do realize that his team's really weak to Stenny because Politis can just like, his team's really weak to Politis because Politis can just proc S2 passive and kill Stenny through like everything else. So I kind of decide on banning this Rimuru here just because uh, if Rimuru steals like swift set and attack buffs and stuff it's like really not great for me. So we go for the Rimuru ban but and my opponent bans Politis too because Politis is really threatening. So I'm gonna need Strays to actually one shot the Stenny behind um, Apoc eating the defense break because like Judging by his team structure, like Apoc should be the person with the highest health. So Apoc's dying 100%. But I need this Denny to die, otherwise I have really, really terrible reach. And since my opponent has two books, it's also not looking too great for me. I'm also forced to actually S to the DJB because there's no point debuffing anything else because DJB will just cleanse it off. But let's go. We have Vigor. We have Attack Buff. We have, hopefully, crit damage buff, so the st strays should be doing omega damage and there's no mitigation. But if you haven't noticed, strays' S3 kind of hits like a wet noodle if it's not the highest attack target. Oh, that's a lot of damage! But luckily, we're able to do so much damage. The Stenny explodes, the APOC explodes, and DJB AOL has no hope of actually killing this game. Or killing my unit so they forfeit out of the game and we're safely back into emperor once again and i don't know if that was like the fake suck or the real suck because there's two of them one of them's a legend player and one of them is like not but i'm not too sure i i really don't know like it could have been but they weren't using a legend porter so who knows but yes um i don't think i'm going to do another placements for the new competitive RTA season because I think they're a little tired and honestly like bullying people who have like 200 speed openers is like really fun the first time or like the first few times but after that it gets like really stale so if you guys have any ideas or like anything you want to see like please let me know like this game is in such a content drought right now where like ooh shiny unit aimed but after that it was like it's the same old, especially since the Frenzy didn't change. Like, literally the meta is the same. It's just aim is there now as an aggressive opener, I guess. But I digress. My opponent first picked Scarabell, which is one of the most popular first picks, surprisingly. And I pick my tried and true C. Lilius DJB. It's not really mine, but like, it is tried and true. Um, and then my opponent picks Meteor Cowric, which regrets which gives me big regrets on not picking Fudica, but it's fine. And they also pick Stenny, and this puts me in kind of a tough situation because I don't really want to commit to Cleave yet. So I kind of pick like two neutralish GPSs, like Savior Aiden here, just because Savior Aiden is like good into like everything. And I pick Sylvan Sage Vivian because Sylvan Sage Vivian is pretty good into Stenny, uh, all things considered. My opponent would pick Solitaria here, which is like a big terrorist unit that I don't really want to deal with, to be honest. But um, I think the play here is Ida because my Conqueror Lilia should be able to outspeed the Solitaria. And then if Solitaria gets outsped, then Ida can close the gap for my other units. And if Sage Ball presses S2, I can provide a lot of mitigation for my team with Aiden by pushing up and stuff. So that's what I was thinking. And if they ban my Conqueror Lilius, my DJB should be able to resist the Solitaria S3, right? Right? But 
You will see Saltaria is a fucking terrorist unit in standard. Being like 290 speed, 230 plus effectiveness, like very disgusting. My opponent actually does not opt to go for the S2 oh, on Sage Ball, which I thought was really surprising. And the S1 does not actually go and get the sleep onto Ida. So we're actually able to press all my buttons here, you which is very nice. So Stenny is basically guaranteed to, to die here. And I should be able to delete this Solitaria with an Aiden S3, I think. Especially with this crit damage buff I'm about to get from Sylvan Sage Vivian. So we're looking pretty good. Um, A few games before this, I did get soloed by a Scarewall plus... <laughs> Sage wall because they kept sleeping my units, but surely that can't happen with all the DPSs I have, right? And I still have DJB to give immunity and whatever. But I guess my opponent knows a Sage Ball can hack wins, like rob people of wins, so they go and continue playing. Ida gets stunned by Sage, not a Sage, by Scarewell. And oh no, I guess my opponent changed my mind. <laughs> so like a rip bozo, right? Not that they're a bozo, it's just like if you pick Sage Ugly, you kind of are a bozo. No, I'm just kidding. But like he is ugly though. Oh! Oh wow. We're against Kana, which is like one of the If you know if you know me but no no Kana, that's like kinda weird, but like he is one of the biggest content creators. For Epic 7 currently. Um, I think he's pretty funny. And my record against him, I think, is currently 2 2. And I do distinctly remember him being really rude and picking my Conqueror Ilias or banning my Conqueror Ilias when I lost those two times. So I'm like very excited to get my revenge against him for those two losses. And I already know he's like. A speed cleaver. Like yeah, I don't think I've ever seen him do anything watch. else. So I already know what I'm up against. So I pick my highest imprints here. Like you know, like as you do. So I pick Wander Silk because Wander Silk can counter some Degen strategies because mine's like on 200 effectiveness or whatever. And I pick Weedred just because Weedred is one of the biggest speed imprints that is also self-sufficient as a DPS since he pushes himself up. Like if anything dies. And I'm like pretty sure I'm about to see like two speed imprints from his side. In which case I'm just going to pick Acid plus like one more unit. Like I could honestly, I was going to say I could pick Kron, but I can't pick Kron into Amid because of that stupid skill nullifier. So I'll have to think of what I can put into the last slot. Like maybe Spirit Isolene is doable. Just because he likes to do like these single target cleaves that aren't really great into her. He picks the Sid, and if I remember correctly, it is a damage Sid, so I don't have to worry about it being like 320 speed or whatever. And he picks Watcher Shuri, and since I am very, very confident, I actually go for the Ida last pick, and there's a reason for this. It's because if you look at the base speeds for the units, um, my units all have like Okay, it's closer for Aemon, but like Aesid has like 12 base speed on like, what's the thing called? A lots. And Conquer Ilias has like a lot of speed on A lots too. So I'm thinking like I can risk giving away one speed imprint just because my nat units are like naturally like faster in terms Why are you running? He goes for the K Ron last pick, but I'm honestly not too concerned because we still have Ida. And we potentially have Wander Silk high effectiveness, or even like C Lilius high effectiveness. And you know, Cleave Brain, <laughs> he bans the highest speed imprint, which is like no shade because I did the same thing. And we kind of have to hope. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Um, my Acid speed RNG, my Conquer Lilius, but whatever. We actually go for a series of plays that I would label as one giant misplay in hindsight. So if I was playing this match again, I would do it very differently. I think I would still S3 this Aimid with Acid, but I think I would have held this um, 
conquer Lois S3 because Ida was able to cut with one non-attack skill and you will see that my luck isn't the best. Um, Kron resists the redirected provoke so I'm kind of forced to just like press all my buttons and hope everything dies. Uh, luckily Aemid does die. Like I was like kind of concerned like maybe it's really high ER on Eternatus so I didn't want it cutting so that's why I went into it with S3. Um, I should have sober an S3 here and killed the Cid, but I guess I was like coping a little bit hard or whatever. So that's not great. Um, Cid is able to go now. Uh, Cid one shots basically my entire team since he did resist the attack down, which is like really bad luck. Like I like a lot of things got resisted. Like the S2 got resisted from C. Lilius. I'm not too sure if his Kron's on ER. But yes, I did that. We got some mad justice here. When my conquer Elias gets the <laughs> champion's trophy stun, and we're able to protect our Sid with Wind Rider, so his Sid is forced to go into C Elias. And I was like pretty confident. Like my C Elias is like kind of tanky, but again, like this is Sid with speed buff with Wind Rider, so it actually one shots from full health. But my A Sid is naturally faster than his Sid. And we're able to close out the game with a 50k finisher S3. So. <laughs> Woohoo, we did it! No, no, no. This is no shade to Kana. Like, we, we, we love his content. Especially his like patch overreach stuff. Like that stuff is like hilarious. But I was trying to like get a few more matches in to get like a more fair and balanced like win loss streak but like this is a giant win streak so no matter what happens i think this is the last match for me because playing too much rta in one sitting gives you brain damage and i cannot spare the brain cells for that so unfortunate my opponent is also a legend player from the border so that's kind of spooky but you know i'm sure my cash conquer Lilius will find a way to win this game so I obviously first pick that, and then my opponent goes for DJB Yolha, which I thought was like a very curious response that I might have to try later. But I pick Flutica just because Flutica is like pretty good into reset. And I didn't feel like picking Aemid, so yeah. My opponent responds by picking, uh, what's that, what's that thing called? Hyafin and Sylvan Sage Vivian. And this team is really weak to Ida, so I last pick Ida here, and I also pick Aiden just because Aiden's like, you know, she's one of those units that is really bullshit, <laughs> and even if there's counter, she is very impactful just because she's so overloaded. My opponent last picks Senya, and I don't really feel like dealing with a Senya right now, especially since my units are all like squishy DPSs that can easily kill themselves. I decide to ban the Senya, and my opponent like goes for the ban onto Ida just because Ida would have like destroyed his team. Very understandable. But yeah, um, it'll be very tough. Uh, I will definitely have to say. We're pressing all my buttons with Conquer Lilius here, or I might go for an S two onto something, or maybe I go for the S one for chip damage, like. Yeah, I decide there's no point in actually um, waiting for S2 because if I can't S2 the DJB. So I go for some bonus ship damage on Sylvan Sage Vivian. And I make a big choke here. I should not have pressed S2. So the reason I pressed S2 was like, oh, I'm going to fucking take more stacks of inside off of Sylvan Sage Vivian. But I forgot Hyafin has guide, so it's going to push his team up. Which is not great. Um, we do get a counterattack from Aiden though, which is nice. So we get we do get more chip <laughs> on Sylvan Sage Vivian. But if I just S3 and Focus Fire down the Sylvan Sage Vivian, I think we would have been in a much cleaner position. But this is not the best. Uh, Sylvan Sage Vivian again does not have an attack buff. So like my steady should be able to survive this one hit. But like holy shit, that does so much damage. He also gets a lot of heal back just because Sylvan Sage Vivian's S3 does heal so like I I basically wasted all the momentum I had from taking first turn which is kind of a choke 
Um, I'm kind of forced to press S3 here with uh, Faithless Lydica. I don't really want to because it's not resetting anything, and I should have just done it from the outset onto Sylvan Sage Vivian. But my Seni's so low that I, that Hyphen like actually threatens to kill. I am holding Savior Aiden's S3 for a more opportune moment, and I'm just kind of hoping that we do enough damage with so uh, Steny to kill the Sylvan Sage Vivian, but we do, so that's pretty nice. And then the next biggest threat, I think, is this Yafin. So I think I should have gone on to Yafin in hindsight, but you know, whatever. Uh, I I go into DJB because DJB now doesn't have any of the, what's it called, mitigation from his S3 being on cooldown. So that's not great for me, but we do finish off DJB and I go for the S3 on Aiden now because my steady is looking like it's not about to survive that burn but if you didn't know uh burns pierce defense and defense is where most of my steny's bulk comes from and if i give my steny um invincibility here it'll be very nice for her to survive the burn damage so she can potentially get like one or two more dps turns uh the yola does go ahead and one shot my Aiden, and we kind of have to pray that Flitica is not drawn by the dual attack, but Flitica is. And with the dual attack and crit damage buff, it will, I guess I didn't crit. Um, Hyafin is still able to kill my <laughs> Steny from behind stealth, which is not great. But it should be fine. Um, this Yolha was around like 200-ish speed, so... My two units being fair and balanced at like 300 speed should be able to grind him down, especially since all his stuff is on cooldown. But another sussy thing is that Yol has passive, like, passively like gives her damage reflect, and my Flitica is very low HP due to the mistakes I made <laughs> earlier into the game. <laughs> so I kind of have to hope that. My Flitica can survive long enough with the Conqueror S2 shields to hopefully grind this Yolha down. We go for the S3 onto Yolha just because it gives skill null, and I think it does the most damage from Flitica's skills. So, like, you know, at this point, <laughs> all the damage matters. And we go for another Soulburn S2 just because Flitica can take so much reflect damage from Yolha's S2. But it's looking really close, I'm not going to lie. And I'm going to pray for a few lucky champions trophy stuns, which we do not get. But I don't think it matters, because I think at this point, even Conqueror Lilius might be able to grind out this Yolha just because she can provoke lock and stuff. And we're so close, just need a few more attacks. And Yolha goes down, and Flicka is <laughs> so low, but not even close, you know. And the customary leg to end the game. But yeah, that was it. A very successful journey back into the serious RTA format, kind of. But yeah, that's it for today's video. Like, as always, I'll see you next time.